Hello, hello, yes, we are live. Hello and welcome back to this weekly appointment. We start an hour late today because I have some construction work outside of the house or so a bit of noise. I wanted to have this moment uh, to be focused to, without any disruption from outside. Thank you to be here. Thank you to be here again in this weekly appointment. This week we are going to work with the topic of learning how to well, uh, blah, 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 learning how to learn. And we are here in the group uh, Learn Well uh, Free Online Learning by New Wellness Education. And today I'm going to go with you within, uh, through different aspects about what I think is learning, what, uh, how do I learn, how to build the situation, how, how to learn for people. It's going to be a bit different compared to the other week. It's going to be a bit more about uh, um, like a tutorial slash training, giving uh, content and not giving exercises to do. And uh, this is coming after my experience in working in this field since uh, different years. As I mentioned in the Monday video, this is coming also collecting information from uh, training for trainers that I developed together with Antonio, that is the president of New Wellness Education and uh, uh, with me one of the founders of the organization. And uh, yes, and um, we are going to work on this topic. So, uh, first of all, I would like to reflect, I looking down again for my notes, I would like to reflect about what do you think is learning? Because I started in the last week, in the last meeting in Monday, uh, uh, talking about, okay, what is learning? Is a uh, transmission of information, is uh, an ability to give infos, or is an ability to take a knowledge and replicate it? For me, learning, it's all, it's, uh, this last part is the most important part. It's, uh, I consider that I learn something when I'm able to give it to other people, to replicate it. So learning is also connect in uh, making the knowledge in my and be able to give it back to other people. And uh, this is also important in order to understand how do learning happen and how my brain receives the information and I work on it. And so, starting about my specific way of learning, what I uh, work on when I work on the learning uh, process of my learning moments is that uh, to, um, first of all, ask to myself what is the purpose. Um, because I consider learning a process and also a project. So I use some uh, knowledge about project management and understand, okay, what is the purpose of learning this thing? And this is giving me the motivation to understand why to put the, that specific effort into learning that. And it's supporting me when my focus is going down. Because what I believe is important in to building a learning uh, process is I also have the ability to focus on things. And uh, to have um, engagement. Engagement with the content that we are receiving. Or when you were a facilitator, engagement with the public that is with us. In order to work on this engagement, I start with the purpose. So to ask to myself, what is the purpose of learning this? Or if I am working with people, I start to explain what is the purpose of learning that specific thing? What is the purpose behind that knowledge? So, uh, first question is, what is learning? Second question now, what is the purpose? The third step is about asking myself, what are the best conditions to learn? And this is uh, uh, connect with different things, with the space, with the timing also, and also with my personal state. So what are the best conditions that I use to learn? I divide the, now I work on myself and then I talk how to build also for other people. For myself, what are the best conditions to learn? So my, what are my level, energy level in order to learn? What are, uh, how to build my space in order to do this? We start the first uh, week of this uh, free, uh, learn well in this group uh, about setting up the environment. Uh, it's really important for me when I work on learning to build a space where I feel comfortable in. To build a space where also my focus is connect only with the learning things. But also to take to be with my body in a state that is connected with the learning. I'm gonna go with two example uh, in a bit, first I want to explain uh, also how do I perceive information, how do people perceive information. After that, I asked to myself, I did a process about understanding, okay, learning 
it's about taking information and bringing it to me or giving information for me to people. After thinking, okay, what is learning? Okay, what is the purpose of receiving or giving this information? Okay, what are the best conditions of it? Which way do I receive information? And this is one of the crucial points that I'm going to start today. And I'm going to present you a model that is called DAK. I'm going to write it here. There is also R. Oh, you see the deposit. <laughs> okay, VAK. Uh, v stay for visual. So some people receive information more in a visual way. This is also connect with uh, our culture, how the educational system is built up. So some people are used to receive and process and understand more information through visual input. Pictures, showing examples, so to visualizing that specific thing. And this is, uh, um, I believe all of us, we all have five senses, we all perceive information in different ways, but some of us, it, it, uh, it has, according to this model, a way that prefer, that is more comfortable in receiving that information. Some people, through visual. Some people, the A is through acoustic, hearing, listening information. And I personally perceive, uh, um, like more to receive and I work better in receiving information through auditory information. Some people, the K stay for kinesthetic. Some people uh, prefer to have into the learning process a movement part. Uh, um, an example, not only in the visual, but also moving. Engagement with also the body. I also sometimes have this. And the last part, R, that is um, connected with, 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 with the visual, it's coming, uh, as I mentioned before, through how our educational system is built up, is through reading. That is different from visual. And I'm going to explain in a bit why. It's important to start with this about the learning to understand that people prefer to receive information in different ways. And ourselves, we, I personally, and I believe you, uh, prefer to receive information in different ways. Being aware about how do we receive information, do we prefer to receive information, it's important when building up our own environment for learning. To focus on what we prefer more. There are different ways to understand this. There are different questionnaires. I'm going to comment below under this video, after the video, some links to take some questionnaire. One first uh, like way input to start to understand how we prefer to receive information is this one. I ask you to close a moment your eyes, close the eyes, and think about your best friend. And then open the eyes. Fast, in that way. The question is, what is the first thing that you have that arrived to, my, to your mind? Was the face of that person? Was listening the voice of that person? Was a specific movement? Was a feeling? This can be a signal what is your preferred style? According to this model, 70% of the people prefer visual. How it's built up also the education system. 10% acoustic and the rest split between kinesthetic and uh, reading. It's important also to understand that this is, it can change according to situation, according to moment of life. And it's important to understand the information can be given and received in different ways. In this way, more we include this aspects, the different aspects into a learning process, more we build more opportunities in order to receive or transmit the information. And I'm going to give you some examples. I personally discover that I prefer to receive information by listening. In the past, I was, uh, when I was going to the university, I was, uh, uh, people were giving me a lot of things to read, a lot of visual things according to what was the models. And I was not like was a bit struggling. Then I start to understand maybe this is it's not a problem. It's just because I prefer to receive information in different ways. And I start to focus more also in listening. And I find out that this is working for me. So I building a routine, I building a structure where I learn and I put listening audiobook, listening podcast, uh, watching documentaries, but for listening the explanation about the things. And I connect with this with uh, other moments where I have. Uh, would I feel good with my energy, where I'm focused. For example, what I did in this quarantine uh, to keep the learning process, I 
put a screen, a laptop, in front of the, um, um, my bicycle on the, um, fix the fixed bicycle to train inside. And I was wearing um, headphones to listen podcasts or watching videos, but especially to listen the explanation why I was doing sport. So in this way, I was good with the body. I was in a moment that I was focused. So I built my environment in order to maximize the focus. And I put the auditory part in that. And this was supporting me and my learning process. And while giving information, it's important to be aware of this. Because when we, I, now I'm switching the role, not anymore as a learner, but as a person supporting other people to learn. When we're uh, delivering an activity, when for, uh, I read a comment uh, in the previous video, when if we work as uh, educators, trainers, teachers, facilitators, when we are delivering a content, it's important to be aware about, okay, when I give the instruction, first I read the, the instruction. So I explain with my voice. So I reach the person, the people who prefer to listen. Then I take, I put a flip chart or uh, some on the laptop, on the screen, I share the screen. I show a picture and I show the text of the content. In that way, also the person, the people who receive, prefer to receive information in a visual way, they can understand, make it there. And in the, also I use example by moving. I put feelings and movement into this. So I can recall to the mind of the people um, physical experience. So I take care about uh, kinesthetic. In this way, I build a more multisensorial experience for the participant. In that way, the information can be processed more in a better way to the brain. Because we have different levels of memory. We have short-term memory, long-term memory. We have a process and a, um, wave states of the brain. More we work on taking information in different ways, more we are able to internalize it. And uh, um, another part, I'm checking again my notes, Another part to um, uh, get to, uh, ready to learn is uh, to understand what uh, we naturally do. So what is our uh, things that we are already doing in our life or what, what things that other people already do. And in this way, we can uh, not separate the experience of learning through what is already there, but connect it. So for example, coming back to my experience, uh, example of before, I usually do trained by bicycle, so I connect to that experience, another experience of learning. A second example that I use in my life, for example, being a person who likes to listen, when I'm driving, when I, sometimes I drive a lot because I live in a rural area with no public transportation, I have also a taxi company. I drive a lot. When I drive, I put on, when I'm alone in the car and I can, some podcast. In this way, I connect an activity that I already do, with a second one. And um, it's not relevant that I'm focused to really only in the listening, because I'm driving, because I'm cycling. But it's a, I start to take, to internalize that specific concept in a, a different way. Then what I also um, uh, suggest, what I invite, coming back to my first definition of what is learning, is the ability to replicate it. And this is the crucial point. There, is a, there are many exercises about that. Uh, there is the, um, it's called ex explain it to a child. So in order to understand if we have that knowledge, it's important to be able to send it to another one. So when I feel able, when I feel that I internalize the topic, what I do, what I organize, I call a friend, I talk with my girlfriend, I talk with my friends, I, I organize lessons. I work on a way to transmit it. In this way, I process the information in my brain and I re-elaborate it and I send it back. In this way, it's passing from the short-term memory to the long-term memory. This is really important to understand about the learning process while organizing a, an, act an activity. If you ever participate to a youth exchange or a training course, you, maybe you remember that at the end of the activities, many times there is the moment where people, groups, share their job. This is not uh, a way to show off or this is not a way to punish people. <laughs> Sometimes people feel like this, but this is a way to conclude that specific learning process. So by sharing it to others, we make it ours. We deconstruct and reconstruct the information in our brain 
and we put it out in our own words. And this is a crucial part of the learning process. This is also why the educational system have tests, have uh, interviews, have way different ways studied in order to test, not only to see if the person know, but to see if the person can replicate that knowledge. Because only when the person is able to replicate that knowledge, that, that knowledge is coming into the long-term memory, it, it's there to be used again. So to recap, starting from the beginning, what is learning? My idea of learning is when we are able to replicate a knowledge and information to transmit to other people, not only to memorize it for ourselves, but to explain it to others, maybe to connect with different topics. And why starting to organize the learning process? I ask myself, what is the purpose of learning? What is the purpose for me to learn new things? You know, if I have the awareness of why I'm learning that thing, it's supporting me to be more focused, to put a bit more effort. And also to, if my students or participants of my projects, they understand what is the purpose of learning that specific things, they understand a bit more uh, the why, the, the reason to, to go in that topic. Then, talk, uh, thinking about what is the best condition to learn, how can I set up the room, the space, the focus, the lights, the sound, the voice, how can I frame the time about uh, uh, the learning in order to maximize it. Understand that people learn in different ways. This is using a you know, V stand for visual, a for acoustic, K for kinesthetic, movement and feelings, R, R for reading, some people prefer to read. And I'm gonna give you some examples also here. For the V, visual, people like to see, visualize the information, acoustic listening, K, K kinesthetic moving, also connecting with other people, R, reader. For example, people who prefer to use colors in order to select what do they prefer into a book, this is a sign that you are maybe more visual than the reader because I personally like to read, but not, I don't like to, to underline with colors and it's not working. If I do it, it doesn't matter because when I read, I listen to my internal, uh, my internal voice so I come back to the acoustic because I prefer to learn to acoustic. Then how to make it connect with something that is already there. So how to take an activity that is already there, that is already engagement, that is already bringing engagement, that is already bringing fun for the people, and how to connect it with the learning, not to separate it. My example is a bicycle, uh, in the training a bicycle, listening podcast in the car, uh, listening podcast. By working with people is how to connect activities that are engaging with learning things. So to give metaphors, examples. So... Um, while you're organizing a workshop with uh, students, with participants, with uh, children, with adults, with whatever, to use an, another activity, to use, um, I don't know, the building a house uh, with uh, material, with papers, something that is already there, maybe to use it as example for team building, for communication. In that way, you connect something engagement, something that is bringing fun, something that is bringing uh, people uh, to talk communication with the learning process and after that you can summarize it and I'm gonna go now for also to the, this, those steps because I also have another core assumption that learning happens only when there is interest if there is no interest learning is not happening okay so uh, now I'm gonna give you a bit more theory about uh, the um, things I explain now about the process of learning and uh, it's important to understand, I can draw it here, yes. You can see, yes. I'm going to change also color. It's important to understand that the learning, this is coming back to building the environment, it's connected with time. So we have to be aware about the timing to have the maximum focus, because I believe that our focus is limited. So, and also the ability of people in doing things. When we organize an activity, it's important to understand that the people in front of us, the participants in front of us, they have different level of knowledge, of knowledge, of awareness on that specific topic. There are some people that they know a lot on the topic, some people that they know not, not so much because it's new. So to find that spot, that moment, where the interest is for both, and to build a situation that they can support between themselves. So you as a trainer facilitator, you are not the one 
who is uh, giving only content, but you are giving the space for the ones who have more knowledge to share it to the ones who have less. And it's important to understand, this is the people who are new in the topic, these are people with medium, medium knowledge, this is people with good knowledge. So the, the learning process for the people with, that are new in the topic is the maximum in that moment. The learning, this is the learning pro process. And it's slowly, how much do they learn? It's going down, because if they are already good in the topic, they are learning less. And here, this line is the ability. It's important to be aware not to do activity when you have a mixed group only here or only here, but to find where is the balance, where is the spot, in order to support who is good in the topic to share it who is new. And um, this system, it's also uh, used, and there is a nice video that you can share also later, um, using also technologies, because technologies, they have a, uh, on Google you can find everything. So when there are a group of people who are new in a topic, you can build what is called self-organizing learning environment, SOLE, self-organized learning environment. In this way, uh, you divide people in groups of three or four people. It's important to have the group, and I'm going to explain later why. Uh, you give a content to the group, you give a question, a topic to work, and then you give space to them to find a way how to find a solution. In that way, uh, you provide also, you ask them to, if they have one laptop, one smartphone, if there is no people with the knowledge. In that way, the participants, they start to talk within each other. They start to ask questions. They start to look on the device that they have. So they receive information to the device in a visual way. They talk to each other. So they receive it and they talk with acoustic. They interact to, to each other. So they work with the kinesthetic process. They use this balance, this chart of the learning process happening with the new, medium and good and the level of uh, learning and the level of uh, um, um, ability. In this way, with this system, you can build space where people can learn by themselves within themselves and can optimize according to all these theories. And it is also connect with um, a model that we build up before making this group, uh, this specific learn well uh, free online learning, we use a model called the Kolb cycle. I'm gonna turn this paper. I'm giving a lot of content, but I, at the end of it, I'm going to share all the information in the comment. The cold cycle is about experiential learning. And uh, we start, in this, according to this model, with the experience. So, coming back to the example of before, uh, we connect an experience, a metaphor, with the learning process. Before I mention about uh, building a house for the team building. So, the participant, you build the space, you build the environment in order to maximize the focus on the learning with an experience. Not with uh, giving straight away a content, but building an experience, building a um, space where people can interact, talk, listen, see, move, so to use a visual acoustic and kinesthetic and they can experience a certain thing. This is a cycle. So there, is, there are four steps. After that, uh, my drawing skills, but I'm gonna uh, attach in the comment below. After that, there is a moment of reflection. Reflection within the group. So they can reflect on what is happening and you can give some questions to them. You can give to, to, to the participants uh, in, some inputs already in the direction that you want. Then it's coming, the, the third step that is down here, you don't see because my phone is also a small camera. So the third step is what I mentioned before, 
the moment to start to share with other people. So after the experience, questions, reflection, the process, to externalize it, to externalize what is the learning of that specific activity. So to be able to transmit to others. And the third step before to coming back to experience is the moment to reframe it, to think ab about, okay, how this experience with this specific input, this question, this reflection, this sharing, how can I reframe it in order to be able to have another experience in the future to learn again. And this is how we build up this group. So we are giving a mission in the beginning of the week. We are giving experience. So you, ex you can experiment, you have the possibility to, exper to experiment an experience. Then we give a, a webinar. Again, webinar in the mix here. You receive some, experience, some activity that you can do and you, we start to put some questions. Some questions on the specific topic, something. Then we, we find the, the third way about um, uh, reflection. We, um, using this kind of technologies that we are having at this moment, we, we do a guided reflection. So we invite the guest, we reflect with ourselves about the week. So it's the third step on the reflection and we internalize and we explain. And we give the open space of the weekend. We already give to, to you the topic of the next week in order that you can start to, okay, that experience happened that uh, input came, that uh, reflection happened, so I internalized the topic and I'm getting ready for the new experience. And this is a cycle that is connecting with what I told before. Okay. With uh, using the senses, the different senses, visual, acoustic, kinesthetic, and reading, taking the levels of the learning, who is good in the topic, who is uh, new in the topic, this is the level of learning, this is the level of ability, to mixing that in order to build up a best, uh, what we consider best environment of learning process. And um, that's kind of all. I still have some um, things about uh, small things that you can experiment, but I want again to go through all this. Starting back, what is learning? Ask to yourself if you, if you want to learn things or if you want to deliver in content, what is learning? When learning happens. Learning, from my point of view, is when I'm able to transmit a knowledge to other people, to internalize it to myself and to give it to others. And to what is the purpose of learning? What is the purpose of learning in general? And what is the purpose of learning that specific activity? And to have that specific knowledge. This is also to support, to focus on it to uh, motivate yourself, to motivate the people in front of you, to explain what is the purpose. And then what are the best conditions? What are the best conditions in the moment to learn? What are the best conditions or in the future to build the learning process? Connect with the space, connect with the time, connect with the sound, technical things, logistic things. And we also see this in the first uh, uh, weeks. So how to build a space, how to make it working for ourselves. Understand what we already naturally do in our life in order to connect the learning, not separate experience, but to connect it. This is also con called uh, anchoring. So to connect, to anchor the learning process to another thing that we like, that we enjoy. Because this is coming from the core assumption, learning happens when there is fun, when there is interaction and engagement. About timing, how to set up the time, how much time do we are able to focus. And for this, I want to open uh, uh, things. There is a specific technique that I find in a course called Learning How to Learn in Coursera that I'm going to also touch this in the link. It's called the Pomodoro Technique. Uh, why Pomodoro Technique? The Pomodoro is a, a simple timer with the shape of a tomato. Pomodoro is a tomato in English. And you set up 20 minutes of time. So, because learning happens also when there is a regularity, when there is a habit of doing that thing. In order to get used to have 20 minutes where you know that you focus on the things. You have no other distraction. This is a good support trick. Close this uh, thing. Then, coming back, how do we learn? Visual, acoustic, kinesthetic, or reader. What is our preferred style in order to integrate it? We understand that the participants in front of us, they have different styles. So to build something that can reach everybody. To build systems, to systemize the learning process when we are groups, in order to be aware that there, in a certain knowledge there is somebody that is new, somebody that has made you knowledge, somebody that is good, in order to give for all of them and also to make them support each other. This is the line, the blue line, this line is the line about learning. If, if I'm new in a topic, I learn a lot. More I know, less I learn. This is about ability. 
find that spot, that moment where they can support each other. Then there is the self-organized learning system. It is a really beautiful uh, way to support people to learn. So to build a system of people, they, they have mixed knowledges to provide them, to ask them to have a, one laptop or one smartphone, to give them a topic, so to ask them to work in a group so they can talk to each other, so internalize, explain, find also on the net or uh, in some uh, slides that you can provide also visual content. Then the last thing is about a full cycle of experiential learning. That is the um, theory behind that we use to build also the experience. It's called Cold Cycle, that is starting from experience. There is the uh, um, reflection with input, there is the sharing with other people, and then there is the internalization and the reframing in order to come back to the experience. Okay. Well, a lot of content, I know. It was a uh, content that we sometimes we give in a full day to go deeply in all the topics, but I wanted to share with you all this just to start to give uh, input about what can be behind learning and to mention three things that for me are really important. The VAK, the self-organized learning system and the Kolb cycle. I'm going to give links in the chat. Those tools, they really change a lot my way of learning for myself, my way of organizing activities for other people. And the last thing that I want to add is that really strong things about learning, uh, especially when you want to build it for yourself or for people. Make it playful. It's really important to make it playful, the learning moment, because uh, it, um, there is, I don't know, somewhere this assumption that uh, to learn is boring. But my point of view is that to learn things is really a beautiful moment, a playful moment. I want to uh, share with you, I want to invite you to build moments for yourself to learn or to other people to learn that it's playful, that it's like a game to gamify it, to uh, give uh, rewards to people, to give prizes to yourself, to enjoy, to um, um, celebrate the successes of learning, to anchor this good vibe, this good mood into the learning. Because our brain is also working in different ways, waves. And there was a, um, actually in that course, a new thing is, uh, I forgot, um, some things connect with about learning before go to sleep, because we're in the moment it's more, uh, uh, getting ready to relax and by the way connect with the fun part of the learning and building uh, metaphors building uh, plays building games building environments where the learning is playful this i believe is the key and i hope it was supporting for you uh, watching this feel free to comment to share to invite uh, also if you want to have new knowledge about the, this topic contact us in the in the um, chat uh, in the wellness education page we are thinking about uh, um, making an online training for trainers i don't know if you would like to know ab more about it contact us we are still working on it we are developing the idea because we have the training for offline version we are see how to adapt it in online version and uh, i also want to give you some information about how the group is going because with our team, we are working in order to see after 11 weeks how maybe to shape a bit this group. We are working to see what new things we can bring. And maybe, maybe, we are not know yet, we are going to have a meeting this evening, maybe these new things will already something come this week. Because 11 weeks already passed, lockdown is changing, situation is changing, and we want to keep the playfulness, the engagement, and the learning moments uh, in, with movement. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening and enjoy learning, enjoy a playful uh, uh, learning, a playful life. Bye-bye.